So here you're solving a system, but both of them are nonlinear. And so you really have to pay attention to which term you want to eliminate or which term you can eliminate. So here I have y squared and y. Those are not the same kind of term, therefore I cannot cancel the y's. However, I have x squared and y squared. Those I can cancel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the bottom one by a negative 1 so that I'll have a positive 1x squared and then I'll have a negative 1x squared which should cancel each other out. So um, this equation is staying exactly the same. The bottom one will become negative x squared, positive y, and negative 5. And then if I add those together, these will eliminate. I will get 2y squared equal to 6, and I can solve this for y. Divide both sides by 2, and then take the square root on both sides. And we know that when we take the square root on both sides, we automatically get plus or minus 3. So I have 2, or not 3, the square root of 3. And there is no nice square root of 3, so leave it exactly as a square root of 3. But that means I have two answers. I have y equals square root of 3, and I have y equals negative square root of 3. So I do still have to go in and calculate what x squared is. Now, neither of these equations say um, x squared equals something, right? Or x equals something, so I can choose very easily. What I would do is I would choose the top one because look at the bottom one. If I plug in a square root here, I'm going to have to move that square root over and then I'm going to have to take the square root of a square root. That's not going to be cool. So let's look, plug it into the top one and see how that looks. So x squared plus square root of 3 squared equals to 11. And I'm also going to plug in the other one. So x squared plus negative square root of 3 squared equals to 11. Well, what happens when you square square root? The root just goes away, and so I have x squared plus 3 equal to 11. And the same thing is going to happen here, but what's a negative times a negative? It's a positive. And then the square root of 3 squared is just 3. And if I minus that 3 on both sides, I'm going to get 8. And then finally, if I take the square root on both sides, I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 8, which is plus or minus 2 square root of 2 if I simplify it in my calculator. And then here I get x equals plus or minus square root of 8, and x equals plus or minus 2 square root of 2. Now here's the interesting part. Um, we're going to end up with four answers because notice I had one y value and that one y value gave me two x values. Okay, so that means my solutions are going to be square root of 3 and positive 2 square root of 2, positive square root of 3 and negative 2 square root of 2. Then when I plugged in my other y value, negative square root of 3, I also ended up with two values. So negative square root of 3 and positive 2 square root of 2, and then negative square root of 3 and negative 2 square root of 2. So we actually ended up with four solutions here. Okay, and you have to include all of them in order for the problem to mark you correct. Now let's look at the next one. It's a solving a system of linear equations, problem type 2. This one also has squared and squareds, right? So you, you can choose now because x's have both squared and y's both have squared. But I notice if I add them immediately, the y squareds will automatically cancel, right? And so I'm going to get 5x squared equal to, and I believe that is 35, but let's make sure, 17 plus 18. Um, yes, I get 35. And then if I divide both sides by 5, and then if I take the square root on both sides, 
I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 7. And so I need to try both of those problems, right? So for x equals square root of 7, I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to plug it into the bottom one because this one has a negative. I'm going to have to move that term over and then divide everybody by a negative and then take the square root. Here, I just got to move that term over and then take the square root. So I'm going to plug in the negative 7 into the bottom equation. So the square is going to undo that. I'm going to get 7. And then I'm going to minus 7. And then I'm going to take the square root on both sides. And so I get two answers plus or minus the square root of 11. And I cannot fix that at all. So I'm going to have two answers, square root of 7 and positive square root of 11, square root of 7 and negative square root of 11. Now let's see what we get when we plug in negative square root of 7. Again, plugging it into the bottom equation, I get negative times a negative is a positive, and square root of 7 squared is 7, and then minus 7, and then take the square root, and I get plus or minus the square root of 11 again. So I have um, two answers. I have negative square root of 7 and positive square root of 11. And I have negative square root of 7 and negative square root of 11. And so there are my four solutions. So you have to be careful and make sure you include all four solutions. So taking that square root and getting that plus and, plus and minus is very important that you don't forget about that in these problems. Now, this is the last topic in this section, and it talks about solving word problems um, involving geometry and using a system of nonlinear equations. So let's go ahead and see what they have, and then we'll figure out what they want us to do. So it says the perimeter of a rectangle is 58.8 um, kilometers, and its diagonal length Diagonal length means from corner to corner. It doesn't matter whether I go this way or that way on the rectangle. It'll be the same. The diagonal length is 21 kilometers. Find its length and its width. Okay. We have two equations. I know how to count the perimeter. I know that if I want to calculate the perimeter, I have to do length plus width plus length plus width, right? So add up two lengths and two widths and we'll get the perimeter. I also know um, that this is a triangle here, right? It is a right triangle. And I know that in order to figure out the length of the diagonal, I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So this is my width and this is my length. And the Pythagorean theorem tells us that your length squared plus your width squared will equal the hypotenuse squared which is 21 squared. What is 21 squared? It's 441. So my two equations, my system is 2L plus 2W equals 58.8 and L squared plus W squared equals 441. Now notice here, you cannot use elimination method. Because you've got L's and L squareds, W's and W squareds. None of those are like terms. And because none of them are like terms, you cannot do the elimination method. Well, what other method did we have? We do have substitution. It's a little bit more heavy and involved, but it's still possible to do. So what we need to do is we need to take one of these equations and solve for a variable. I don't want to take the bottom one because at some point I'm going to have to put square roots in and that's not going to be pretty. Okay, 
So what I wanna do is I wanna take the top equation and solve for one of the variables. It doesn't matter which variable. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve for L. So I'm gonna minus 2w on both sides. So the top equation is gonna become 2L equals 58.8 minus 2w. Then I'm gonna divide each term by two. What is 58.8 divided by two? Nice, so we get L equals 29.4 minus a W. These cancel and these cancel, and this one reduces to this decimal. What do I do with this? Now, since we use the top equation, right, to get this, we now have to plug this into the bottom equation. So instead of L, we're gonna use this expression for L. So it becomes 29.4 4 minus w squared plus w squared equals 441. And then remember, to square this, it means that times itself and you FOIL it out. 29.4 times 29.4. I get 864.36 minus 29.4 plus 29.4, or negative and negative, I'm gonna get 58.8w plus w squared plus w squared equals 441. Now, if I combine my like terms and put this in the right order, let me minus 441 first. Okay, so I'm gonna have zero on the right-hand side. That is 2w squared minus 58.8 W and 864.36 minus 41 is a positive 423.36. Now, I can use the quadratic formula for here, or I could divide everybody by two to get rid of this coefficient first and then do the quadratic formula. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. So if I divide that by two, and then I divide this by two, and then I divide that number by two, and zero divided by two is still zero. This is a 68. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quadratic formula for this because I don't think I can factor, it's almost impossible, I mean not impossible, but almost impossible to factor out decimals. You really have to be good at multiplying decimals in your head. Um, so I'm going to do negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And I'm going to put it in my calculator. So let's see. I'm gonna put that whole thing in my calculator. So I'm gonna say negative, negative 29, 29.4. I'm gonna do them separate, right? Plus first, square root, negative 29.4 squared, minus four times one times 20, or 211.68. And then at the bottom, two times one. And I get 16.8. And then let's do it again, but with a minus sign in front of the square root. So let me go all the way over there. And put a minus sign. And then I'll hit enter again and I get 12.6. So we have two possible answers. So let's go ahead and figure out what the lengths would be for those two possible answers. So remember we have an equation to find the length, right? So if I wanna find the length for this one, I have to plug it in here. So length equals 29.4 minus 16.8. So 29.4 minus 16.8, I 
I get 12.6. And then if I want to do the other one, I get 29.4 minus 12.6, which is 16.8. So you get two answers. I'm going to write them over here in purple. So for the width of 16.8, we got a length of 12.6. Then for the width of 12.6, we got a length of 16.8. So notice that the dimensions are the same for both. Both cases, we got the same situation. We know that the dimensions are gonna be 16.8 by 12.6. What's important here is which label makes more sense. It makes more sense for your length to be the longer value the greater value so this one doesn't make sense because your length should always be longer than your width so even though they're the same numbers this is the solution you're going to type in okay and you have to specifically put 12.6 where the width is and 16.8 where the length is and the answer box is there so that's the end of that one now the second equation says the per perimeter of a rectangle so we're still talking about a rectangle here the perimeter is 16.8 kilometers and the area is 12.8 kilometers squared find the length and width okay well how do we find perimeter if this is my length and this is my width we know that we do two L's this side and this side plus two W's left and right, and that should equal the 16.8. How do you calculate area? It's length times width that gives you area. And so this is now our system. But we still have the same problem as we did in the previous um, example. You do not have like terms. L's, W's, and LW's are not like terms. So you cannot use elimination in this problem either. So we have no choice but to um, but to solve it using the elimination method. Now here, it really wouldn't matter which one you use. You could use the bottom one. And if I use the bottom one, I would have to divide both sides by W or L. Doesn't make a difference. You choose which one to divide by. There's like four different ways to do this problem. I'm not going to do them the different ways it'll get confusing um, but you choose which one I could have picked this L and got this L by itself I could have picked this W and got this W by itself I picked this L and got it by itself I could have picked the W and got the W by itself it doesn't matter get one of the variables by themselves and then plug that result into the equation you didn't use so I got L by itself and now instead of L I'm gonna use this fraction in the top equation because that's the equation I did not use when isolating one of the variables. So I get 25.6 over W plus 2W equals 16.8 and then common denominator here is W so if I multiply every term by a W these W's will cancel leaving me with 25.6 plus 2W squared equals 16.8W now I do want the squared term positive so I'm going to move this term over here and then rearrange them so 2W squared positive that guy's going to move over, making it negative 16.8w. And this guy does not move over the equal sign. He's still on this side of the equal sign. So it's going to stay positive 25.6. Now, they all seem to be even numbers, so I can go ahead and divide by 2. And if I do that, I get 8.4w plus... 12.8 equal to 0 and then I can do my quadratic formula so negative 
negative 8.4 plus or minus negative 8.4 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And I can plug that in my calculator. So I'm going to do big fraction and then negative parentheses negative 8.4 close. I'm going to do the plus and then I'll do the minus later. Square root negative 8.4 squared minus 4 times 1 times 12.8 down under is 2 times 1. And so I get that W equals 6.4. Let's see if we get an answer when we plug in the minus. So I'm going to plug in a minus sign there and do it again. I get 2. So we get two answers again. We need to check both of them and see if there's possibly two solutions or if um, it's the same solution, we just need to pick the correct variables, right? So let's go back to this equation here. We're going to find L. So I'm going to do it over here. So for W equal to 6.4, L should be 12.8 over 6.4 which turns out to give you 2. And let's see, because it's most likely the case for W equal to 2. Yep, we're going to get 6.4. So we do get the same values again. We have this for width and this for length. We have this for width and this for length. Which one makes more sense? We already discussed that the one where the length is longer than the width is the one that makes sense. So this one with a shorter length, I mean a longer width and a shorter length does not make sense. So our answer is going to be the width of 2 and the length of 6.4. That should be your final answer.